This is AGPS TV. We are grateful that you've joined us. And then if you have joined us, my name is Mr. Samson Anami. I am going to be your social studies facilitator today. If you have joined us, kindly press the subscription button and like the page. You can send your questions on the comment column. Anything that I will say that is beyond your understanding, you can draw my attention and I will treat them again. Again, when you have missed any part of these tutorials, you can, as it were, rewatch the video after the live broadcasting. Today, I have carefully selected a topic, independence and self-reliance. Why have I carefully selected this topic, independence and self-reliance? After the COVID-19, the most important discussion that is going all over the globe, Ghana, no exception, is the ability of the world to be able to provide its own materials and sustain its own country. We have heard the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Abedankwa Ekufuado, says that we have to provide our own personal protective equipment. And as I speak, there is a lot of local manufacturing that is going on. People are talking about Ghana's food shortage and the level of inflation that is going on. Now, people are talking about one of the importance of COVID-19, that if not for anything, after this uh, COVID-19, we are no longer going to be the same. We are going to put a lot of structures in place such that we will be able to provide and use our own materials. The question that I'm asking, why has it taken Ghana so long and the world so long? America of all countries, by Donald Trump, has even admitted that their health facilities have been overwhelmed. In other words, they have admitted that they are not even self-reliant, especially in their medical field. Today, what are the objectives? For my lessons. It is my hope and it is my belief that by the end of the lesson, you will be able to explain independence. Identify four factors before independence can be achieved. It is also my belief that you will be able to explain self reliance. The benefit of self-reliance, the need for independence and self-reliance, and factors that make it difficult for Ghana to be self-reliant. And finally, how can Ghana become self-reliant as trumpeted by the president and then the United States of America and then the United Health Organization. Now, when we say independence, what does independence mean? What does independence mean? Independence simply means that one is free, or it is a freedom given to the nation by a colonial masters for the nation to rule herself, control her internal and establish
ruled by colonial masters. When I say colonial masters, we are talking about colonialism. That is a system where a country takes over the administration of another country. And as you know, Ghana was ruled by the Britain for a longer period of time. And we have heard Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and other uh, founding fathers who have fought for independence before it was given. Now you must understand that Ghana gained independence through Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, which was given to us on 6 March 1957. But South Africa left apartheid as late as 1994. It tells you that getting independent, it is not easy. And for you to get independence, there are some factors that they have to consider before you are given independence. So on your screen, I am going to show the factors that they have to consider in order to grant a nation independence. Factors to consider when they are showing independence. And one of the factors they consider, as it has been shown on the screen, as it has been shown on the screen, factors to consider when you are given independence. Number one is existence of internal peace and security. They have to make sure that all your security are part of the security service such as the armed force, such as the police, such as other agencies that is able to bring peace and security to the nation is established. Number two, there should be existence of healthy environment, especially the economy. They consider that when you are awarded the independence, you will be able to manage your economy so that the people will be able to live and live well. The point three is that to be able to control the military, political, social, economic affairs of the state. When all these things are met, then you are sure that independence will be granted. And finally, there must be existence of good quality of life of the people. You must promise that the people that are living under your care, you'll be able to provide a good quality life. So when all these factors are considered and they are convinced that you'll be able to outline these four factors, then independence will be granted. So we assume that the Britain led by the head of state at that time, His Excellency Dr. Osage Fukwam Nkrumah and then the Queen of Britain had considered all these factors and have discovered Ghana can do so. When they have done so, it is also the belief that we can be self-reliant. And so in 1957, on the Apollo grounds, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah had trumpeted that the black man is capable of managing his own affairs. What it means in short is that Ghana will be able to manage the political, the social, and economic affairs of the country without external influence. What is then a self-reliance? Self-reliance. So you look at the screen and self-reliance will be projected. Now when you say self-reliance, it is a means by which one becomes autonomous. When we say you are autonomous, it means you are independent. In other words, you are free from any external influence. And when you are autonomous, 
it means you are able to provide your basic needs. Food, clothing, and shelter should be able to provide it by the leadership of the country. Now, I want you to pause and ask yourself, is Ghana independent and self-reliant? Are we able to provide our own food, clothing, and shelter? The question that you may ask, is it true? And the answer is basically no. They have told us that in this country, we import almost everything, including toothpick. Whether it is true or not, it is subject to debate. But why is it so important that Ghana should be self-reliant? Everybody is talking about self-reliance after COVID-19. We have to provide our own needs. What are the importance? So once again, I am going to put it on the screen for us to see the importance of self-reliance or the benefit of self-reliance. Now, one of the benefits of self-reliance is that it helps the nation to use its materials, human and other resources wisely for its development. Understand that every nation is able to develop under only two resources. Number one, we have the human resource, and number two, we have the natural resource. The human resource is the active agent. In other words, a country may be endowed in all resources, but if you don't have the human capacity to be able to exploit these resources, the nation will not be able to develop. And so for any country that wants to be self-reliant, you should be able to use the materials that you have your gold, your diamond, your bauxite, your oil, your manganese, your vegetation, as well as the human capacity, that is the ability of man to acquire knowledge and skills in order to effectively utilize these resources in order to achieve its development. Number two, it helps you as a nation to become domesticated. By domesticated or by domestication, we simply means the ability of the nation to provide all the basic needs that the people will need to survive. All the needs of the nation should be able to provide. For example, we must be able to provide our own food, we must be able to provide our own water. All the things that we need, power, energy, our cars, whatever we need to get as a nation to live a comfortable life, we have to be able to provide it. The third point is that it helps the nation to produce and consume its goods without importing. We have heard political activists talk about why we need to spend billions of dollars in importing foodstuffs like sugar, importing foodstuffs like rice, importing foodstuffs like tomatoes from Burkina Faso, a country that has gained independence for as long as 64 years. Why are we still importing tomatoes and other foodstuffs? from neighboring countries. It tells you that we are not self-reliant and therefore we have to be careful. After COVID-19, we need to put structures in place so that we'll be able to do that. Now, the fourth point I want to talk about is that it helps the nation uh, to manage its affairs well. When I say to manage its affairs well, if you are not self-reliant and you depend on other countries, they are going to detect for you 
and by detecting it means that you don't have the autonomous or the autonomy to determine the things you want to do and the things that you cannot do and so you are not able to manage your affairs on your own way and that is why I have carefully selected this topic so that we'll be able to balance our resources, our materials, and then the need for us to be self-reliant after COVID-19. And as a student, you have to know that we have to be self-reliant after this pandemic. Now, what is the connection between independence and self-reliance? Every independent should be self-reliant. Or if you're an independent country, then you should try or strive to be self-independent. So once again, what is self-independent or what is independent and self-reliance? So back on the screen, we are going to highlight independence and self-reliance. So independence, as I said, is a freedom given to the nation by a colonial master for the nation to rule herself, control her internal and external affairs, and it is rather fought for and not freely given. And with self-reliance, we are saying that the country is autonomous and is able to provide its own resources. Now, what are the factors that makes it difficult for Ghana to be self-reliant? We always want to provide our basic needs. We all want to provide our basic needs. So what are the factors of self-reliance? What has made it so difficult for Ghana to be self-reliant? Now, the factors that has made it very difficult for Ghana to be self-reliant is that factors that makes it difficult for Ghana to be self-reliant. We have two factors. Number one, we have slavery as one of the factors. Now you must understand that the period between 400, uh, 1450 to 13, 1835, the period between 1450 and 1845 spans almost 400 years. Coupled with colonialism had made it very difficult for Ghana to be self-reliant. And this colonization has had negative impact. And that slavery has brought the following. And that slavery has brought the following. And so as we move into the next projection, then you will see that one thing that slavery has done to us is that it has increased our sorry, dependence on foreign bodies such as the World Bank, the United Kingdom, because we always rely on them to get funds and aid from these foreign countries. You will notice if you have followed the uh, Minister for Finance, Ken Oforiata. Anytime he presents our national budget in parliament, one of our sources of income is foreign aid or foreign donors. And it is assumed that without this foreign aid or foreign donors, Ghana will have to struggle in her budget allocation. Don't forget on the 6th of March, 2017, the president has announced that he's going to put our economy in place, said that Ghana will go beyond aid. But a country that has been about 61 years at that time before the speech, why have we always relied on foreign aid? The reason is that we have always relied on foreign countries for aid. Now, the second one is a psychological mind. By psychological mind, what I want to say is that 
it has always brought about our develop for foreign taste, our development for foreign taste. Now, by foreign taste, what I mean to say is that because we have used foreign products for more than 400 years, we have been accustomed to it. And so whatever product we want to use, we want to use product from the foreign countries. Then again, there is this ideology that there's a doubt, or there's no doubt that Ghana has in the inadequate number of industries to produce manufactured goods to the people. There is no doubt that Ghana has inadequate number of industries to produce manufactured goods to the people. Now, if you count all the industries, you see that Ghana is very limited. And that is why, once again, the president is talking about one district, one factory. Once again, I have said, and I'm asking, why has it taken Ghana 64 years for us to be able to build industries? What happens to all the industries that have started by our late president, His Excellency Dr. Osage Fokwane Nkrumah. He had envisioned the need for our country to be industrialized, but because of political uprising, we have not been able to maintain our industrialization, and that has necessitated the need for import, and that has crippled our economy such that we are not self-reliant. Another problem that we have is that we have inadequate capital for development purposes, and Ghana has less gross domestic product. When we say gross domestic product, we are talking about all our production that we put together. And when we put all the production that we have in this country together, it is not enough or adequate for it to sustain the nation and therefore the need for us to import. We have over dependence on primary products like cocoa, timber. We have over independence on rubber and other cash crop products like cashew. When we say over dependence on primary products, what it means in short, is that we are not able to process these goods and add values to it. And so we are able to produce enough of this product. If we take cocoa, for example, Ghana is the second largest producer of cocoa aside Cote d'Ivoire. And yet we get little revenue from cocoa production. That is because we are solely relying on these primary products without adding values to them. Then the fourth point is that there is poor development of planning policies. I have just trumpeted it that after 64 years of independence, Ghana is now trying to, as it were, add values. And even the industries we are building, the pace is too low. And between 2016 and 2020, only food products Ghana has imported over a billion dollars, and that if we have produced these foodstuffs locally, all this money would have been maintained in this country. The purpose of this teaching is not how to trumpet our problems over the years. But the purpose of our lesson is going forward. What must we do as a nation in order for us to be self-reliant? In other words, how can Ghana become self-reliant? There are things our political leaders will have to do. 
There are things our religious leaders will have to do. There are things our traditional leaders will have to do as well as things that the citizenry will have to also do in order for us to be self-reliant. And as you watch these tutorials, we are praying that you will not just listen, but you are going to take this preaching all over the globe. As Jesus Christ said, go into the world, preach the gospel, and whoever repents, baptize them. We need to baptize all our political leaders, our religious leaders, our traditional leaders, in order for us to be self-reliant, and we need it rapidly. And as this COVID-19 once again had soon. And so for Ghana to be self-reliant, the first thing we must do is that measures should be taken to control the rate of population growth. Why do we need to control the population? Because if you have a high number of population and then your resources are not enough, it means that your per capita income is going to be low. When I say per capita income, what I mean in short is that it is the total national resources divided by the total population. And so if your population is high, it means that your per capita income will be low. And per capita income is a measure of the economic ramification of the people. So if your per capita income, for example, is $100, it means that the country is relatively poor. If your per capita income is $1,000, then it is a little bit richer than a country was $100 a per capita income. Britain and America, for example, has over $30,000 as per capita income, while Ghana is lavishing around $2,000 to $3,000 per capita income. And so we need to make sure that there's a family planning put in place in order for us to reduce our population so that Ghana will be able to live within the limit of her resources. The second point is that Ghana should improve her human and material resources through education and training. Now, I've told you that the human resources are the active agents. In other words, without the human resources, we will not be able to provide or exploit our natural resources. Let's take China, for example. They have little or no natural resources at all, but they have trained their human resources in such a way that they are able to utilize technology to make themselves rich. And Ghana is now, China is now one of the seven great nations in the world. And as we speak, China is one of the fastest developing economies in the world, just because they have been able to do so. For you to be able to train your human resources, it is imperative that you pay attention to technology or information and ICT in short, and then you take note of your vocational and technical training. There should be training, there should be retraining of human resources in able to effectively exploit these resources. Then the third point is that Ghana should conduct management training for eight people to improve knowledge and skills. Now, one thing that I have always discussed with my students is sustainable natural resources. When we say sustainable natural resources, we are talking about the ability of the nation to use the natural resources to benefit today and for the future generation to benefit it. And for this to be able to be established, there is the need for us to train our people on how to manage the limit resources. Especially, most of our resources are not renewable. 
We are talking about gold. We are talking about oil. We are talking about our diamonds and other resources. And when they are depleted without carefully managing it, we can no longer do that. And so when we have done so, then we will be able to do that. Once again, for Ghana to be self-reliant, there is the need, let me emphasize this, there is the need for us to buy made in Ghana goods. We have to produce and use what we produce. That is you produce and you use and you use and then you produce. That is why there was one a president of this republic, he says, oppression, feed yourself. And if I'm not right, uh, wrong, we are talking about a champion. A champion says there is oppression, feed yourself. That is around 1983 after the uh, outbreak of fire, which is one of the worst history that Ghana is talking about. So why Ghanaians prefer foreign goods to homemade goods? Why do we do that? We do that due to the prices of foreign goods as compared to homemade goods. In Ghana, the cost of production is very high because producers import most of the raw materials from outside the country. And so they are not able to compete with these foreign uh, producers. And so relatively, the production is high. But like I've said, it is also not a good enough reason why we must still go into foreign products. Let us try to buy these goods and manage. It is better we make sacrifices today and reap tomorrow. China, after independence, had suffered the same fate. Whilst their goods were relatively high in terms of prices, but they had consumed and today, their prices is low, and almost everything is not important from China. If we can give ourselves about five to 10 years and consume our own goods, our local manufacturers will be in good standing. They will be able to produce a large scale. And as it is done in economics, the more the goods, the lesser the price. So let us encourage and buy this made in Ghana goods, let them produce more, and it will bring these prices down. The second reason is that due to colonialization, Ghanaians have been using foreign goods since independence. And like I've said earlier on, after we have used foreign products for 400 years, Ghanaians have become used to foreign goods. But it is important that we go back into our local manufacturers. And those who know me very well, and as you've seen, I like to wear locally made materials. And as I'm wearing my African wear, it's beautiful. And so I encourage all of you to follow suit. And if you have also seen the President of the Republic and his seventh delivery after the COVID-19, all the materials he's using has been made in Ghana products. And so it is a signal that we need to do that. And then one also aspect we need to avoid is that we try to give prestige to people who use foreign goods. I have seen people tease others just because they're wearing wear a made in Ghana attire or shoe or using made in Ghana clothes. We must try to appreciate our own production because COVID-19 have shown our borders are short. Everybody is not talking. This is the first time I have seen United States. This is the first time I have seen Britain. This is the first time I have seen Nigeria. This is the first time I have seen Ghanaians trying to say, let us try to produce things locally. And so when you have depended on these foreign goods and there are challenges where you can no longer import, then you see the problems we have put ourselves into. So for now, let us try to rely on our foreign goods so that in times of difficulties, which I know we will still have challenges, we may not find ourselves in the 
situation we find ourselves in. And then finally, people have said that there's low quality of product by Ghanaian manufacturers. It goes on to say that yes, every production has challenges. And so the quality will be low. But as and when you patronize this, they are able to rake in enough revenue to add quality to the product that we have. So whatever reason we have, after 64 years, these reasons that I have just outlined has been the reasons why we are not still self-reliant. And if you continue to do that, even in 100 years' time, we will continue to be self-reliant. It has come to a time where we have to repent as a nation. We need to depend on the things we produce. We need to add values. And our leaders will have to manage the economy well in order for us to be self-reliant. I hope you have found this lesson very interesting. I hope you've learned something and that from today you go into the market and try to buy local manufactured products. I hope our leaders will rapidly increase the rate or accelerate the rate of our industrialization. I hope we will be able to add values to our raw materials. I hope we are going to free our psychological problems and move away from our reliance on foreign affairs and depend locally. It is about time we appreciate the things. It is about time our industries also try to produce as far as they need. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do well and hit the subscription button. This is AGPS TV. Once again, my name is Mr. Samson Anane, and this program is kindly supported by Charismatic Praise Ministry International. If you have sent any comments and you have questions on our next meeting, copy on Wednesday, we shall address them in our next topic will be discussed. We are having our next lesson science and we shall be doing this in the next two, three weeks. Please stay tuned while we have the science lessons. I hope you have found this lesson interesting. May God bless all of us. Before I leave, continue to practice social distancing. Wash your hands as freely, as frequently as possible. Stay home unless you have something important to do out there. And once again, let us wear our mask to protect us from contracting this virus. Once again, the battle is of the Lord and this thing shall also pass. Thank you.